Hey everyone, in this video I will fine tune these uh, Hugging Face model Bird Base Uncased and uh, I will fine tune these on the Kaggle dataset called Head Speech and Offensive Language dataset. Now why choose this dataset is because uh, this Bard Base Uncased needs to predict on this data set going through the text from this data set to uh, identify whether a particular text is offensive or uh, things like that so uh, let's quickly go over this data set to see what uh, the data set is all about first of all this data set is very small one megabyte only so i can run these uh, run these hugging face model relatively easily otherwise uh, it will take a huge amount of gpu by the way even with such a small data set uh, this part based uncast uh, model will take almost the entire 15 gb of gpu that kaggle provides or your google colab provides because uh, just by design these models fine tuning this model is a hugely gpu intensive work so uh, on this data set uh, this one has uh, uh, this little csv file which has a count the uh, and the number of uh, times each of the class occurs so uh, there are three classes uh, which is head speech offensive language and neither and uh, all of these classification is being performed on this uh, on this particular uh, column and the column name is tweet and these uh, words are really kind of uh, really most of them are really kind of offensive and uh, a hate speech sort of thing and the whole purpose of this challenge is to uh, make bard based uncased fine-tuned so it uh, any any speech is passed to the fine-tuned model then the model should be able to classify it in one of these three classes and now a little bit on this BART base uncased model in Hugging Face. So more precisely, this was trained with two objectives, masked language modeling, taking a sentence, a model randomly mask 15% of the words in the input, then run the entire masked sentence through the model and has to predict the masked words. Uh, this is different from traditional recurrent neural networks that usually see the words one after the other. And also, uh, next sentence prediction, the models concatenates two masked sentences as inputs during pre-training. Sometimes they correspond to sentences they were next to each other in the original text, sometimes not. So about the intended use of these pretend model, uh, what they say is you can use the raw model for either masked language modeling or next sentence prediction, but it's mostly intended to be fine-tuned on a downstream task. Uh, see the model hub to look into note that this model is primarily aimed at being fine-tuned on task that use the whole sentence Potentially masked to make decisions such as sequence classification token classification or question answering uh, Yeah, so that's the kind of purpose. I'm going to use this model as well. I I have the full text already uh, And I'm going to pre-train. Uh, I'm going to actually fine-tune this pre-trained model uh, and then uh, do my classification all right back into my vs code uh, initially of course you need to install these transformer and data sets both are from hugging face and i have kept all these commented out because i have already installed these and in kaggle what i saw is when i installed uh, with these comments i was getting some errors uh, with uh, while using transformers and data sets so i had to completely do a fresh uh, force reinstallation with these commands so you can run exactly this command in kaggle if you face any problem uh, this will actually completely remove these uh, these modules these packages and reinstall it as a fresh package and uh, then the after the initial import i this is the thing that i have my i have already downloaded these uh, uh, data set that i was talking about so this is my original data set source of the data set and i downloaded this labeled data.csv file into my local directory and that's what i am reading uh, in this line pd.readcsv and this is this is my data set pretty much and uh, obviously i have to uh, mention this as a disclosure or as a warning that uh, here this data set is uh, specifically for head speech and offensive language so uh, most of these tweets will be 
uh, very so much uh, uh, offensive and hate speech kind of thing. Uh, so just be our. All right. Now I am going to quickly check um, the distribution of the classes uh, by uh, doing a histogram kind of thing. Import. I'm going to import Seaborn. I have a class uh, here, right? I have a class here, and there are only uh, three classes: zero, one, two. Class, and I have to pass the data. And this is my class distribution. So most of them uh, is in class one, and I have few in zero and one as well. Uh, all right now uh, what I'm going to do is a little uh, cleaning up of these data so on the cleaning up remember that I am not doing here lamentization and stemming uh, and removing the stop words all these things I'm not doing because uh, uh, BART which is what this model uh, that I'm going to use BART based uncased so BART can handle punctuation uh, smiley stop words etc actually those uh, those kind of extra uh, element in your training data set actually feeds information to BART that is BART can actually make decision that helps in making the decision making the BART making the decision so uh, many quite a few quite a few blogs has been have been published and also there have been some research uh, showing that uh, removing the stop words and uh, cleaning the data very heavily actually worsens the ultimate classification result from bird prediction so i am not going to do those heavy cleaning that you normally do in an nlp project but um, i'm going to remove uh, because these are all tweets and i'm going to remove this at mention thing that is uh, at, at the rate uh, your kind of brand etc this is just a tweet uh, handle so obviously um, while prediction i'm assuming the same thing it doesn't going to matter because we are not going to see a repeat of this at mention thing so i am going to repeat going to replace those with just an empty string and for that i have a <coughs> i have a regular expression so this is my code here uh, all i'm doing i'm creating a new column and from the old tweet column i am replacing this regular expression uh, with a, with an empty string and this will take care of those at mention thing and uh, just do a bundles yep yeah. so uh, we can see in the new column that is created to it cleaned that there is no at mention so for example these ml double e w this 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 particular word is no more there here all right and now i'm going to load the same data frame uh, with this um, with the data sets module or data sets uh, format of hugging face because uh, that's more efficient um, uh, than the normal plain python kind of thing and this is my code from data sets import data set and these um, this data set uh, takes uh, uh, takes both an individual csv file and also um, uh, in memory a data frame so in my in this case i'm passing it in memory data set and if you want to look at the official documentation for the same uh, let's look at this so i'm looking at these uh, uh, data sets from pandas uh, in hugging face official documentation and it clearly says that uh, where does it say also allow data set directly yeah uh, data sets will also allow you to create data set directly from in memory data structure like python dictionaries and pandas data frame and here i have a pandas data frame and i'm just uh, passing that to create my data set let's run this cell yeah so this uh, this particular format is uh, of the data dict uh, kind of format and again this is specific to uh, hugging face and it makes uh, 
execution in this format is more more efficient compared to normal python format and also if you're wondering that uh, i was actually wondering indeed that when i loaded these uh, uh, data set from in memory pandas data frame whether the ultimate output that is this output data set output that is this ds variable whether it's the same if i directly loaded the data set from the csv file so for that i can do this again so here i am doing making use of load data set and to that i am passing this uh, csv file remember our data path has our uh, csv file so let's run this and just uh, just check uh, if it looks the same the output of the data set uh, all right so now this is my output and we can see it's exactly the same what we got when we loaded the uh, pandas data frame from in memory all right and now i'm going to split this data set into train test and valid so i'm just defining a variable uh, which will have test valid actually i'm going to use uh, this ds variable because ds variable is coming from these internal pandas data frame and here i have these uh, tweet cleaned uh, column which is what i need so ds dot uh, train test split and also i need to further split this train test valid into uh valid data set and test data set so test valid will be again invoke uh train test valid uh from that take the test and on that i apply train test split awesome and now i am going to have my final and data dict which is going to be i'm just data set dict and here i have to pass uh, three of them that is for train test and valid so uh, let me just let me see quickly uh yep yeah, this looks okay why these yep yeah. so i have my uh, train coming from train test valid train and test is coming from my test valid test test valid is this variable and valid is again just a train uh taking from test valid okay and now i'm going to uh, remove some of the unnecessary uh, columns from my original data set from my uh, train test valid data set and all these head speech offensive language neither unnamed count all these things i don't need and what they are uh all, they are kind of just accounts i don't need them for this purpose okay now finally data set awesome so now i have a uh, train test and valid uh, three parts of my data set and next step i have to uh, do uh, apply the uh, tokenizer so i already have imported at the very top uh, these uh, auto tokenizer so that's what i am going to use now all right auto tokenizer from pre-trained and uh, within from pre-trained i pass the the, the 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 model that i'm going to use uh, that's bird based on cast and remember hugging face will automatically download um, uh, download these uh, uh, bird based uh, into the local machine cache or if if you are using a cloud machine then it will be downloaded there and uh, 
now let's see how the tokenizer works with an example but before that just remember always use the tokenizer and model belonging to the same model checkpoint while fine-tuning models for custom task this will ensure that both model and the tokenizer have the same knowledge about the tokens and their encodings uh, so when you use a pre-trained BERT, you have to use the same tokenization algorithm because a pre-trained model has learned the vector representation for each token and you cannot simply change the tokenization approach without losing the benefits of a pre-trained model. So uh, for choosing these uh, tokenizer, be careful about that. And now I'm going to I'm going to uh use just a random text to check if my tokenizer is working correctly so run this cell first uh it may take a couple of seconds quite a few seconds indeed because it's downloading few things all right that's over and now uh just some random text and let's see uh, uh i do a output and apply my tokenizer on this text and uh, if you just want to check the output okay so this is the output after applying the tokenizer and i can see it is a dict and i have input ids token type ids and attention mask these are the three keys uh, that is there in my tokenized form of this random text now i'm going to further check uh, a few more things let's do uh let's uh, uh, define a variable called token and uh, convert ids to tokens so these are my ids and i'm what i'm doing is tokenizer.convert ids to token uh, and uh, taking the input ids from this dict and let's uh, tokens run this cell and we can see this is the actual uh, uh, the tokens after converting the IDs. So classifier just checking token, and you can see these two hashes has been added, uh, which was not there in my original word. But this is all part of how tokenization and vector representation works. Similarly, I can do. Uh, tokenizer that convert tokens to string to get my original string back uh yeah and it shows me just checking tokenization uh let's uh, also do a few more things with this so uh let's check some important information about the tokenizer like uh, uh, vocabulary size model max length etc so uh, here in this line, I'm doing uh, vocabulary size, then next line model max length and model input names. This is another thing that I'm going to use in a second, uh, pretty important. Okay, that's the vocabulary size, model max length is 512 and input names are input IDs, token type IDs and attention mask. Now, these uh, model input names... Uh, uh, they are the fields that the model will take as inputs for training and inference purpose. And what we saw in the original after the tokenization, immediately after the tokenization, when I printed the output, I saw the exact same uh, keys. That, that exactly is what uh, these uh, model input names extract. That is the key names, input IDs, token type IDs, attention mask and uh, on the model max length so this defines a maximum number of tokens that a single data sample can have that is in the above case our model is bird based cased that can accept text sequence of up to uh, 512 uh, tokens long so that's a model max length okay now i'm just going to define a method to tokenize the cleaned tweet uh, column from my data frame uh, tokenize let's do train data set
tokenize train data set from that i'm going to quickly check if that was uh, name of the column uh, no that's tweet clean okay I'm also going to define the padding to be equal to max length. And truncation true. Okay. Oh, this will be... All right. Now tokenize my... data set will be ds dot map then I'm going to do tokenize function and batch uh, ban the parameter is batched b a t c h e d equal to true tokenized data set from that I pick friend similarly for my uh, valid data set I will take valid and for test I will take test okay and uh, next No spelling mistake here, it's tokenizer. Okay, now I have to, uh, so my, uh, I have to make my original, this train data set ready to be fed into the pre-trained model uh, before fine tuning. And for that, I need to remove the text, the text columns that I have, because um, uh, now they have all been tokenized. And the model will only recognize those tokenized numerical values so the actual test uh, text values the actual string values in my data frame that is uh, this column or this column they are unnecessary they are not at all needed so i'm going to remove uh, uh, them from my data set and i see another small spending mistake here it's a truncation okay uh, let's run this cell uh yeah so that's uh, tokenizing the entire data set oh i got a column train not in data set current column in data set unnamed so where did i uh, do the mistake let me figure out uh yeah of course uh, this uh, data set that i tokenized that will be data set not ds remember data set is our uh is what we got uh, at this step let me see yeah the data set is what we got after applying the train test valid and uh, this data set variable has the strain test and valid so uh that's what uh, i'm using here with data set dot map to tokenize the tweet cleaned part so run this again yep now it ran perfectly and uh, now let's uh, uh, what i'm going to do is check the strain data set yeah it has got class tweet tweet cleaned input ids uh, token type ids attention mask so these three are definitely needed they this is going to my going to be my features in the model because this is coming from after applying the tokenization and these two needs to be removed Trend set will be my variable after removing tweet and tweet clean so that's the method i'm going to use and to that i pass the list of column names to it 
and also uh, do it clean and uh, then I have to uh, do a formatting here because I'm I'm going to you going to be using TensorFlow uh, as the framework for this particular video so I am going to use with format TensorFlow and then tf uh, eval data set so i'm going to now i'm going to be uh, just declaring three sets for my um, for my uh, before the training that is uh, evaluation data set and the test data set that will be uh, actually that's i can just copy paste and then change the relevant part eval data set similarly for the test data set test ef test okay and then i have to uh, prepare a dictionary for my train features and that's going to be uh, let's train features equal to so what i'm going to be extracting uh, is i have an x value which will be the keys train from train set x for x in i have to uh x i have to get all these names that is input ids token type ids and attention mask and remember what we got these names from is uh, this parameter from tokenizer model input name so i can just copy this part and then come back here for x in tokenizer that model input names okay and then i have to uh, merge uh, i have to create a new uh, data frame uh, kind of by merging the features and the class and for that uh, merging uh, kind of creating a new data frame for feeding into the model i'm going to be using uh, this particular method of tensorflow from tensor slices so if you look at these official documentation what they say is that creates a data set whose elements are slices of the given tensors the given tensors are sliced along the first dimension uh, this operation preserves the structure of the input tensors removing the first dimension of each tensor and using it as the data set dimension all input tensors must have the same size in their first dimension uh, yeah this is obviously important otherwise they cannot be sliced together so as an example uh, slicing a 1d tensor produces scalar tensor elements so data sets equal to tf dot data dot data sets from tensor slices one two three uh, that will produce uh, uh, produce a scalar tensor element uh, similarly slicing a 2d tensor produces 1d tensor elements and uh, slicing a tuple of 1d tensors produces tuple elements containing scalar tensors uh, all right so let's do that for my data so this is going to be my final final model uh, final data to be fed into the model so train set for final model tf dot data sorry the data dot data set dot form tensor slices and i'm going to be passing it a tuple and what my tuple will be uh train features that is this one and also from my train set the class column okay now next uh, 
uh, I got to just shuffle it. So train set for fine train set for final model equal to train set for final model dot s h u f f l e. So if I look at the shuffle data shuffle uh, official documentation. So I'm looking into this uh, API of TensorFlow tf.data.dataset. Uh, this is where I, uh, within these, these um, from tensor slices is what we used already. And now I'm going to use uh, shuffle this one. So randomly shuffles element of this data set. This data set fills a buffer with buffer size elements. So randomly samples elements from this buffer replacing the selected elements with the new elements for perfect shuffling a buffer size greater than or equal to the full size of the data set is required uh, for instance if your data set contains uh, 10,000 elements but buffer size is set to 1000 then shuffle will initially select a random element from only the first 1000 elements in the buffer once the element is selected its space in the buffer is replaced by the next 1000 that is from 1000 first up to the next 1000 maintaining the 1000 element buffer uh, so what important point to note here is that this thing that for perfect shuffling a buffer size greater than or equal to the full size of the data set is required so you for me i can use just the length of the entire data set uh yeah so let's go back shuffle and lane <coughs> transcend and apply a batch let's put eight okay so shuffling is done and i need to do the same uh, things uh, for my eval features and for my test features so yeah so this is for my validation or evaluation features and this is for my test features okay and now finally the model compilation and model uh, first i need to define the model Uh, TF auto model for sequential classification. This one I'm going to take from pre trained. And inside, I'm going to pass my bird based uh, case. And num labels is three because here I have three labels, that is, three classes and uh, and remember this uh, board based case uh, with this line your the model will be pulled from hugging face uh, repository that is uh, this one uh, to your local machine cache directory and if i go to the files and versions of hugging face this model is uh, so i'm going to be using the tensorflow here so we can see the tf model.hpy file is 511 mb so that much uh, the, the, so this file will be uh, downloaded into your cache directory okay now model.compile that would be first um, i have to give the optimizer and I'm going to use tf dot keras dot optimizer dot atom and choose um, learning rate. I'm going to be playing safe and choose a really low learning learning rate uh, because uh, with models like BERT, if you choose a higher learning rate, uh, sometimes you face a lot of problem. Uh, that's probably uh, another topic to discuss altogether. Loss equal to tf uh, dot I'm going to do sparse categorical cross entropy. 
from logics g i t s equal to true matrices will be so sparse categorical accuracy will be my matrix categorical s p a r s c c a t why i'm not getting accuracy anyway sparse categorical accuracy that is all and lastly uh, so let me uh, yeah, and lastly, I have to actually do the... So what I did in this line is... Uh, one second, uh, I think I have made some mistake. I'm getting a syntax error here. Loss equal to, matrix equal to, cross entropy. Is there a spelling mistake? I don't think so. Yes, I was missing this comma over here. model that fit um, well set for final model run for epoch equal to three Okay, now this uh, will start the actual training and I'm running for very small number of epochs, three. I would really advise to run it for like uh, seven, eight epochs minimum. But remember, uh, uh, I ran this in Google Colab and also in Kaggle and in both the places it took the entire 16 GB of GPU uh, allocated to uh, to the kernel and each epoch was taking averagely 24 minutes to 26 minutes around. So it's a uh, long, relatively very uh, process intensive work uh, here with this model. So and that's why I ran for three epochs. But uh, the, even with three epoch, I got a very good result and my predictions were really sensible. So uh, I need to show you the output in a separate notebook because now uh, I have to run it for almost uh, well, more than one hour so here is my notebook after running three epochs and uh, we can see that the sparse categorical accuracy i was getting after three epochs is uh, 0.9144 even after just after two epochs i was getting like good accuracy uh, 0.9084 and uh, here is my little uh, code for plotting them so i'm just plotting from these history variable uh, so i'm plot plotting both my sparse categorical accuracy and val sparse categorical accuracy and also the loss uh, that is uh, this loss which is a training loss and the validation loss and uh, let's see the result so this is my plotting so this is a uh, model sparse categorical accuracy and uh, on the x-axis i have the epochs uh, and this is for the loss and uh, now the final which is evaluation of the model but before evaluating i have to uh, run this model on my test data set so here in this line let me zoom in here in this line i was uh, doing the evaluation model that evaluate and to that you pass the test set uh, which we have already defined and now i have to pass to this um, evaluated model uh, okay now note that uh, on the evaluation that is on the test set my test accuracy was relatively smaller it's only 0 0.8986 that's not too good actually uh, but remember we ran only for three epochs so if you run for 10 epochs or more it will be much 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 better now i have to uh, pass to this model some uh, test data some random speech uh, to check whether they are classifying correctly now here the a disclosure and the warning again that uh, because this uh, this test and this model is for properly recognizing head speech and uh, uh, things like that so uh, the the sentences that i'm going to pass that's taken from uh, reddit 4chan channel and uh, they are really kind of uh, really not the ideal words that uh, you want to see 
and here are that uh, the, that part of the code so i just initially declared uh, de defined a uh, dict variable with uh, uh, three values that is i have zero for head speech um, one for offensive language and two for neither and then uh, uh, previously uh, our mod our model has already been evaluated now uh, what i'm doing to that model i'm passing these uh, this list of sentences so you can see the uh, so this is first sentence uh, then this is second sentence and then uh, this is a third one and obviously you can see these are really kind of uh, very very offensive language and we need to see whether the model can correctly classify it now uh, and of obviously you cannot pass these sentences as a um, string document they need to be tokenized and that's why i'm using the same tokenizer that i used for uh, during the model fine tuning and uh, that will tokenize these list and uh, output some actual numerical values and uh, then uh, uh, and also passing these logits and finally, uh, with this little code uh, for preds in class prediction, I am just taking uh, the actual label for this uh, uh, from this dict. Sorry, uh, because this this model will produce just uh, 0, 1, 2 and uh, uh, I mean th th this model will produce some tensors. That is, this spreads this this output of this model is a tensor, and from that tensor, I have to take the, the maximum uh, to get my actual prediction, and that's why I'm using np.argmax along the axis one, and let's see the result. So uh, when I'm doing print spreads, this is the tensor I'm getting and then my actual class prediction is taking the org max and then with this line uh, this is what i am printing so uh, they are uh, taking the corresponding label values from this uh, from this dict and printing the output the classification ultimate final classification so i can see that uh, the first sentence that is this one is uh, classified as neither so it's good this sentence is actually offensive to me but uh i think the model is kind of taking a relatively milder approach here but the next two sentence has been really uh, really classified as hate speech and offensive language they are indeed so very much um, uh, hate speech and offensive indeed so yeah so after three epochs uh, looks like the model is producing a kind of sensible result in classifying uh hate speech and offensive languages i also tried with another uh another sentence here uh, he dresses up like a beggar these days uh, uh, and this model again predicted uh, this to be an offensive language all right so again this um, is uh, just after three epochs so if you are running these uh, i recommend uh, running maybe like for 10 epochs but that will take more than uh, three hours definitely uh, because the model is large all right that pretty much wraps up this video if you have liked this one smash the like button and also do subscribe because i'm going to do many interesting nlp projects over the coming days and weeks so, see you in the next one. Thank you very much for watching.